stay hot. I'm Bladen Kirk, joined as always by my two favorite co-hosts of all time, Matthew Sponauer and Theo Ash. And there has been a lot of NFL news circulating recently. Justin Fields finally got traded. Aaron Donald retired. The Vikings are making some crazy moves ahead of the NFL draft. We've got a lot to talk about today, but before we get into that, Matt, Theo, how are you doing on this beautiful Sunday morning? This is the probably the earliest record we've ever had. It's up there, but it's St. Patrick's Day. And yes, it is. Not oh, a single I one of us forget. is wearing green or has anything <laughs> yes. green in frame. Wait, wait, oh, wait, no. wait, wait, wait. Oh, this, is, that's, this is green, wait, but wait, you wait, can't wait, really wait. tell. You have to believe me. No. You have to believe me that this dark... <laughs> a little fraudulent, but okay, we'll give it to you. Fabric is a green, green hue. But there I'm in Boston tell. still, and I will be going to their St. Patrick's Day parade, which figures to be Good time. lit. Yeah. Um, lit. I, I hope you have fun. It's going to be lit. I'm honestly a fan of the early record, though. I kind of like, you know, 930 is not too early for me. And I don't want to say knock it out in the sense that it's a chore. But uh, going through the rest of the day without like something I need to do at like 5 p.m. Plus the natural yeah. lighting being available to me with my big window. I'd, I, I, I'm a fan of the it's play. Not, I like it's it. Not a horrible, it's not a horrible mm -hmm. thing. We will uh, be having conversations. <laughs> conversations. We'll be record. Having, <laughs> having the stay hot recording time conversation. <laughs> but instead of holding a meeting in the Maturing middle of is a, realizing. <laughs> instead of holding a, a meeting text, text chat. in the middle of the podcast, Bladen, how are you doing? Uh, I'm doing all right. You know, I haven't, uh, haven't been up to too much. I feel like I, my band, Atessa just dropped our first single. Hey, check it out on Spotify. Is it I on need, Apple? I need to make a Bladen fan cam everything. so I can go and reply to everything on Twitter. Stream. <laughs> Stream. Atessa. <laughs> Stream. That might be funny. I might do that. Yeah. It's, it's <laughs> called last dance. I have a pretty sick guitar solo in it. It's not very long, but it's cool. Is it about and Jerry Krause? Some, no, it's about, um, Oh, what is it is about a TV show. It's about um It's Jordan oh, propaganda. <laughs> I'm not I'm not making the fan game if that's the case, buddy. <laughs> it is not Jordan. No, no. Uh, our lead singer Carla, she wrote the lyrics about a show. It's not and I can't remember what it's called, but she she wrote it about a show. Just about um is there a character from a show called like Mr. Darcy? Oh, are you talking about Pride and Prejudice? Yes. The movie oh and the God. book? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what the that's what the song's about. <laughs> my boy Matthew McFadden and Kira Knightley in the movie? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's what the song's about. Right. So and then I got roasted on Twitter for Austin. saying that applesauce belongs on mashed potatoes. Yeah, that I mean that thing is that's just insane. Yeah, Does the that people not are roasting me. It is insane. On, bro. Come on. No, that is a perfectly normal food Come combination. On. No, it's though. not. Yes, it is. Have you ever had latkes? No, I don't think so. Okay. That's that's where it comes from. It's like people dip latkes into applesauce. Like It's like potato pancakes, but instead of using syrup, you use applesauce. I, 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 it's, think, it's, I think I think maybe, potato pancake maybe. isn't mashed potatoes though. I feel yeah. like but the, applesauce but the, difference, the, difference in isn't. the thing that's already <laughs> mashed it just might be a little bit of a sloppy, too sloppy a texture. Exactly. I, I understand exactly. the point. the the potato and apple combo, which I'm not opposed to, but in the it's apple a texture sauce, thing for you. Well, yeah. <laughs> okay. applesauce in mashed potatoes <laughs> would you put applesauce in water and drink it you know <laughs> no, it's the same not exact even, it's is not, literally is not it could not be it's more similar one, one to one you know it's <laughs> it is not that one to one at all it is it is not i'm trying to think if there's anything else going on i don't think so uh, fields got traded my flag football team fields, yeah, fields got traded fields did get fields. traded <laughs> Who is better, Justin Fields or my flag football team is the real question. I think Justin Fields would go for Probably a couple of touchdowns on your on your flag football team. I felt very important Probably. because I was at a dinner party last night with some Patriots fans, and yeah. they are obviously very interested in what the Patriots quarterback situation will look like. And Fields was a often discussed possibility. And then I 
you know, got the phone notification and saw the news that he got traded and I like was able to make a a large announcement. <laughs> oh, you woge bombed the dinner them. Party. That's I awesome, woge, man. I woge bombed the party. And you stand up and like the glass <laughs> and stuff to that would have been tough. I basically I did. Have an I basically to make. did. I basically did. <laughs> like That's no way he went for as little as Mac Jones, that loser. Like <laughs> Yeah, he went for a sixth and with the potential to be a fourth and apparently the rumors are that the Steelers don't intend to play him at all this year I don't know how they could know that already I guess your plan is Russ right like they they planned on Russ I my first reaction was I kind of get it we sat here the entire offseason talking about how like, yeah, maybe we would try out fields for the sake of, like, there might not be 32 reasonable quarterback solutions, and he's got some rushing upside and whatnot. Mm-hmm. But we're three years in, and, and he hasn't panned out, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, we, we expected, like, maybe a team to give up the Darnold package, like a second and a little bit more, or maybe like a third and a little bit more. But we wouldn't have supported that move. We would have been like, that's not right. Outside of maybe right. the idea of, well, you got to do something. Yeah, I guess he's got upset. Like that, that's what it would have been. But it seems like teams just, nobody was actually bought into that. Nobody was going to do that. And the second that you're not like, well, we're going to roll into fields as the starter next year. He's a one-year rental because you're not picking up that fifth-year option. And I, a one-year rental of, of fields is worth a day two pick. I think no way. Right. Mm-hmm. I think no shot. So I guess I'm a little surprised that it's a conditional sixth, but really it's a six and a four if he actually plays. I don't think it's that that shocking. And I I I, I guess I would start fields over Russ for the sake of the upside, because I don't think Russ has a ton in the tank. But I'm also not stunned that like, yeah, Russ didn't sign there to be the backup to fields, man. So, yeah, right. Well, well, I, I think you can let him have again? a good old competition. The- you know, like, I agree. I agree. Plus. You're right. You're right. I don't know if I would be saying right now, like, there's no way in hell that we start <laughs> Justin Fields yeah. over Russ, no matter what. Uh, I, you got to have a competition and they will. I, I I don't know what the rumors are, but if, if Fields just like looks way better than Russ throughout training camp and like is lighting it up in the preseason and, and Russ is not, it's hard to believe that there wouldn't be conversations like, Maybe Fields should start because Fields, I think, did get railroaded a bit by the Bears and the way they built mm-hmm. off their built out their offense, especially with the 2022 draft. Before they traded for DJ Moore, uh, it was a new coaching staff, you know, new GM, you know, Matt Nagy. It was over. He was free of that, and they still didn't get him any support outside of Vilas Jones in that year, and. That was pretty painful, I think, for for his development. I think that that was a big nail in the coffin. And yes, they got DJ Moore, and that was great. And and they got Darnell Wright, so it got a little bit better, but it was just a little bit, you know, too little, too late. It was a and, season away from being a season away, even though they made the right moves mm-hmm. or they had some hits last year. It still wasn't mm-hmm. up par. Yeah, and I think Fields. I, I think that he could definitely be better than he showed in Chicago and somewhere else. But I do think that he is slow going through his reads. Like, I just don't think that he processes information extremely quickly. He's got all the athleticism. He's got the arm. You know, he's got he's a big game hunter with downfield accuracy. So he's explosive and all that. And we saw him, you know, if he can get that rushing magic back that he had at the end of 2022 when he was like mm-hmm. ripping off 50 yarders every game, like, that's huge too, but I, I don't know. I get it. I always kind of, I spec, I was speculating a fourth, I guess, before it happened. I think early in the process, I was speculating maybe he would get a second or third, but it, it was a fourth was kind of what I thought they might get. And then the conditional six could be a fourth if he plays. So yeah, it's not the most shocking thing in the world. And I think the bears kind of had to do it. I mean, they didn't have too much leverage, <laughs> They're, they're going to take Caleb. It's the right move. We've gone over and over right. it. And um, I don't think having Fields and Williams in the same quarterback room is a healthy yeah, it's, option. It's, it's, 
I mean, just the second that Caleb would make a mistake, that'd be called for fields again, and you're going to spend the whole offseason with that drama, and every reporter right. is going to ask that question. And rightfully so, but, you know, that's all you're going to talk about. Screw that, you know? Yeah, look at uh, how insane the Bears fan base is being about, I mean, well, th- they were being more insane these past few months than I think I've seen a fan base be in my time on as an analyst. I mean, the mere notion that they would select Caleb Williams was met with, like, disgust and, like, rejection and, like what are you talking about until polls says it like i don't believe that it's happening and it was just so obvious the entire time i've just never seen a fan base like reject a move that's so clearly happening (laughs) i think a lot of the it's part of partially i don't think it's all bears fans for sure i think mm -hmm. fields being the young quarterback that they've believed in for a long time like every fan base is ridiculous about their young quarterback and then on top of that, I think Caleb Williams maybe has a particular true, a particularly More. high number of haters because like, you know, he's painted his nails and yada, yada, yada. So I think all There's of those things combined, and it's just a weird situation that doesn't happen that, that often. Mm-hmm. Um, true. The, it might not all be Bears fans. I had a, I had a reply yesterday that was like, I said, Bears fans lock in. Like, I know you're sad, but you got to lock in. You have more. You have Keenan. You have have Williams. It's going to be good. And then a reply was, I just don't like Caleb. And then someone was like, why not? And like, you should in the replies to that guy. And then he said, well, I'm not a Bears fan. I just don't like Caleb. And it's like, this was a tweet about Bears fans. (laughs) Like, maybe it just is Caleb haters from other fan bases pretending to be Bears fans (laughs) because that's what that guy was doing. But this this doesn't even feel like, I don't even know if it's necessarily that a lot of people are Caleb haters. I feel like a lot of people that are Caleb Caleb haters are also May haters. I haven't, I mean, how many people are like, it's, it's, I don't mean to interrupt you. No, it's the winning in college is what it is it's like the they're (sighs) overthinking this the traits it's uh, jj mccarthy it's that type of stuff and i'm not to call out mccarthy specifically but like how Penix and and mccarthy and nicks were all but although you know mccarthy whatever like how how Mm -hmm. were they in the heisman race and and these guys weren't but then these guys are better they're overthinking it they Mm -hmm. love people love Mm -hmm. their overthinking and it's like not (laughs) really man yeah, yeah. That's Grant, definitely part of had it. a Heisman. He won the Heisman, so who knows? Yeah, yeah, Heisman. yeah. Well, Vote I guess the team. thing that is, I guess, understandable from Bears Twitter and what I think it's really about is they just are sick of starting over at the quarterback position, yeah, and right. they just don't want to do it again. They think it means another timeline reset. They mean they think it means we're going to be bad again next year with a rookie. We're into the unknown. It seemed like we were starting to turn things around in the back half of last year. And instead of continuing that momentum into something great, we're now blowing it up, starting over. And now we could go three and 14 again next year. But I I don't think that's going to happen because the rest of the, the rest of the roster isn't like leaving with fields. (laughs) It's just fields. And a lot of the reason for the, the turnaround last year was, the defense like that was what was ranking so high not the not the offensive results which were pretty average in the in even the back half of last season so it it i think that's the main catalyst to like why these bears fans were so enamored with the idea of keeping fields is they just didn't want to start over no matter what and then you look at caleb and they don't like him and we're starting over for this bisexual fake bisexual <laughs> and uh I mean, you, were... you hear what's I, I i saw some tweet the other day and i didn't look into it almost at all but i just saw somebody being like you know i have the report i've heard teams are looking into some negative things about caleb and then like no explanation mm-hmm. of it at all and i'm like oh i saw that i saw that too and then someone asked what the explanation was like are we ever going to hear what these bad things are and then i think it was um greg grape greg gabriel the old bears like curmudgeon former scout or whatever and then he's like no that's personal it'll never see the light of day and it's like well what what are you talking about like what are these things that scare you what is my takeaway supposed to be what's like well i like there are things conversations behind closed doors and there's like what are the things and he's like how dare you ask what the things are like that's personal (laughs) like what i also know what's going on I, i i go back to to you know 
I, I think a lot of the problem stems not only from starting over, but wouldn't it be cool if you already had the quarterback and then you could do something else with the first overall pick? Like that would just be better. Sure. Right. And it's like, if yeah. you've already believed in fields this long, it's like, man, I, I wish it was like that, but I don't think they're going to be starting over. I, I think honestly, if you hit on a number one overall pick quarterback, he's probably going to be very good very soon, especially if you surround him with real weapons from the jump, which the the bears have a chance to do. I, I mean, really mm -hmm. you could be one of the better first overall pick QB landing spots in a while, man. I mean, usually mm -hmm. it's yeah. like Lawrence was just a disaster year one and Bryce Young was just a disaster year one. I don't see any reason why it should be like that. I mean, even if you don't go and land like a Dunze or neighbors with the nine, getting any of those top guys and throwing oh, yeah. them in there and you've got the tackle last year, you got DJ Moore, Keenan Allen, I think is a great pickup. Yeah, so we got to talk cool. about that, the fourth-round pick for Keenan. There's not too yeah. much to say, I think. Um, he's going to be a good complement to DJ Moore. I think those two skill sets are mm -hmm. great next to each other. Looking at Keenan Allen versus man versus zone, he's much better versus zone. His EPA per target is like double versus zone, and it just makes yeah. sense. Like He's not a crazy athlete. He's not going to be running away from anybody at this point in his career. Uh, he's someone who wants to, you know, settle down and be on the same page with Herbert and just exploit the open zones over and over and over again. And then Moore is like substantially better running away from people like versus man, like running these digs smoothly, like catching and turning up field. So I think I always think that you should get a wide receiving core that complements each other as much as possible. You don't want redundant skill sets, but so and the Bears just got that for a fourth. If Keenan can stay healthy, which is kind of a big question mark at this point in his career, that's the thing that could derail it. I don't see why, as productive as he was last year, it can't be a a very good duo of of Keenan and DJ and Caleb and Komet, and we'll see what they do with the center position because that's a massive, gigantic hole. But yeah, to go from an to go it's from a good an center offense, class for Caleb Williams to go from an offense that was. You know, we've talked about how out of structure it was. And Theo, I think it was you that said it felt like they don't practice sometimes just because of how it lacked timing to now you're going to be able to have DJ Moore and you can have Keenan Allen, who might be one of the best, you know, timing threats in football. And then you can have Cole Komet at tight end. I mean, that I think that's going to make Caleb Williams jump to the NFL very easy. Yeah, I, I, I think having the QB friendly guys is big. I think this is a really solid investment because now it feels like if you leave the draft without a wide receiver, you're okay. You have multiple mm -hmm. guys there. It's mm -hmm. not just DJ and whatever. You should still draft a guy. I think you but should if, still draft if, a guy. But if it's a Dunes Air Neighbors and you can make that move, you didn't invest so much <laughs> that mm -hmm. it feels kind of redundant that you're, you're ignoring other positions. Also, Allen, last year, 13 games, 150 targets is insane, man. <laughs> and, However, and that's the thing. And, and that makes you question the other side of this trade, which is <laughs> not his fault. Not, it's not where his Where are those fault. targets going to go, man? Where, hopefully Odunze. Hopefully that my boy Odunze. <laughs> Neighbors oh is God. okay as well, but. I, or Marvin Harrison, drafting, the way things are drafting shaping an up. Offensive lineman, drafting an offensive lineman, I think, would be a mistake. I think you, there's, you cannot leave this draft if you're the Chargers. No, not like anymore. Multiple, you have to draft, like, multiple wide receivers. In, like, I think so. I, I think, I think I mean, yeah, too. <laughs> I there, think, there are two, I think there, <laughs> there are... There's no way... I guess maybe it goes Marvin Harrison Jr., Odunze to the Cardinals. Like... And, and they're left with neighbors, right. which would be fine. Like, and then you'd take neighbors. Yeah. But to me, I have, to me, I have a blue chip grade. I know our grades differ, but I have a blue chip grade on, on a Dunze and, and Marvin Harrison Jr. And it's like, I, I just really think they should leave the draft with one of those two guys or it to me, it will be, I'll be disappointed. That's, that's how I feel about it. And I, I understand trading Keenan away, even though he had all these targets, because I think that this receiving core just needs a complete rebuild, like from top to bottom. And if Keenan is going to be there, he's probably going to demand another 
he's probably going to lead the team in targets and that might be better served going to a rookie uh so I, 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 they saved so much money from moving on from him and, and Mike Williams. So I understand it. I think that built, rebuilding it from the ground up is going to be okay because they have the opportunity to draft someone special and they're probably going to be leaning on their run game early under Harbaugh, right? So I, I, I don't know, though. It's like Greg Roman and that amount of talent, it's kind of screaming passing game disaster at the moment. I don't know if... I think if you put Herber, Herbert and Odunze together, it'll be okay. Like, I think they'll be really productive. If you put Herbert and Neighbors together, even it would be very, very productive, right? Like, I just, I, I think anyone with Herbert is going to be good. Um, so, but it's, it's pretty bleak, the state of the Chargers these last couple of years. And, uh, yeah, I mean, they're, they, they, they have in, to recover uh, from the mistakes here. of the, they have to recover from the mistakes of the previous regime. Right, similar to like, not nearly to the same extent, but similar to the Panthers, where you are suffering currently from the sins of the past, mm-hmm. and like getting off of Keenan and Mike Williams is probably more so a move to free up cap for next free agency. Yeah, exactly. So that you can make those big splashes when you need to. It's and you it's just have right to draft call. well this year. Yeah, it's, it's, it's I, the right I call. I think it's I think it's wise uh, I think it's wise in a vacuum not to hang on and pay those guys a bunch of money when honestly when this team will be competitive, they will probably be aged out of being super super effective and you'll have to anyway. Yeah. And it's short-term pain, but building things out not, you know, knowing it's going to take a little while and and trusting the process a little bit is a good thing. Their dead cap is hilarious. It is $50 million. They are giving JC Jackson $20 million this year. Um, But you got to do what you got to do. And honestly, stacking up even it seems like, but like trying to stack up like some day three picks and doing stuff like that. And they've got extra capital. Just give yourself a lot of swings and and, and see what happens. Yeah. When you've got an engine like Herbert, you're, swings have a much higher chance of working out as well you know that's just is how it is when you have rogers you never need to spend a first round pick on a wide receiver you can spend them all on day two and and they become franchise legends right like they just when you have that thing that is powering everything like you can plug in different pieces and they're gonna light up like i, I so yeah to get those later on draft picks I think drafting offense gives anybody a very good chance to succeed, unless you take Quentin Johnston, I guess. Um, yeah. But uh, if you take someone good, then they should be <laughs> good, you know. So I, I, I don't disagree. I think that it was the right move from the Chargers. I think they were a bit too... Keenan was very good for them last year, but they were just too Keenan dependent. And for the cost, it's it's okay if another team becomes Keenan dependent next year because yeah it, it's time to move on it's time to save cap and it's time to rebuild so yeah for a chargers point of view it's sad that it's gotten to this point where you look at the depth chart and there's like no one there and hopefully john harbaugh knows what he's doing and it's not an urban meyer situation uh with greg roman and yeah we'll see how bad they are i i don't think they're the chargers are going to be very good next year but um no, I think they could be good two exactly. years from now. And I think they could be fine next year if they I think they still could be fine, but we'll they're not their gonna be contenders. Goes, like, yeah. Yeah. They they, they just to need to hit on their before picks. anything else. Yeah. They just have for to hit anything on their else. Picks. But uh, speaking of teams with needing to hit on their picks, the Minnesota Vikings are trying to give themselves a very good shot to hit on some picks. They traded up to have another first round pick sitting at 23. Are they making a shot to get into the top 10? It certainly appears that way. Unless they just love I'm, the number 23 overall pick and just have to draft Chop Robinson there or something. Or no 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 it's 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 not that they love the number 23 overall pick it's that they're projecting that whoever they're trading f- with will I guess. The trade just doesn't really make sense. I'm sorry. Everyone looked at me like it was talking to me like I was crazy. What is the point of doing this? Well, they're, they're, they're trying to stack up draft capital. What did they trade to get the 23rd pick draft capital? Yeah, they lost a little value for the sake of trading up, which is fine if you're trading up for a reason. I know this has been done before, but I just do not think it makes sense. Like, why would you not just trade 
what you gave up for the 23rd pick and then let whatever team you trade with, if a trade does happen, decide if they want to make the move that you just made. I mean, I guess the two first just sounds better, but... I don't know. Maybe they talked to... Is that it? I I don't entirely disagree with you, Matt. So No, 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 no. no. They talked to the team that they're going to trade with, and the trade is for sure going to happen, but they haven't actually made the move yet. And also, whatever team that they're talking with couldn't do it themselves. No, the Vikings have to go make that deal. And then... And then... They can move it to them instead of yeah. the other way around. Like, I, like it's just a little goofy. You I, know? I don't know the inner workings of it, but like I know yeah. in the in all the trade value calculator charts, it seems like the Texans gained more in draft value by the equivalent of about anywhere ranging from a third to like a fifth round pick in the projections that I saw. Right. It's not a ton, but it's just like. For the, the sake Texans, of being like, we can give you an extra first rounder, and that sounds good. It's like, I maybe maybe they're right. Maybe the Vikings I guess other are right, teams, but I just think yeah, it's silly. I, if other teams are looking at the same trade value charts that Twitter has with you know Spielberger and Ben Baldwin and you know all these and all these analytics guys, they would say, I'd rather have the picks you gave to the Texans than the Texans pick. Uh, Yeah, you know who else? The Texans. The Texans are literally like, you're wrong, by the way. The pick we just gave you is worth less. This isn't a draft night trade where it's like, here's a certain guy that we want. Yeah. This is months out, dude. The Texans are literally saying like this, if we were in the shoes of the team that you were trying to trade with, we'd rather have what you just gave us versus that 23rd pick. Yeah, so it doesn't like... (laughs) It doesn't pass the initial common sense test where it's like the Vikings downgraded in draft value to go move up. It's like, didn't you already have those those exact assets? Yes, they did. I I know it's like, I'm sure somewhere it's like maybe the GM of, of whoever the commanders or the Patriots just likes the sound of the first and and they do prefer it. And it it is what the Vikings. And everybody's board is different. So maybe if they've then they're dumb, I think. Then they're a little silly, I think. Or maybe it's all board based. Who did, maybe who that's did the what Eagles I'm trade with? Who did the Eagles trade with to move up for Wentz? I can't remember at all. They tr- the Titans had the number one overall pick. And then And then it was I don't remember. Yeah, I look it up. But um I don't know. I guess every GM is different and their board falls different. Maybe they don't want to move too far back where they're like moving from number four to like number four. 40 i don't know but i guess they'd get number 11 hypothetically maybe the vikings want to hold on to their first and next year and if they have to give up two firsts to that's, move up. that's what that's what i would think but it's still that is like still just kind of silly it's like it, it, no matter how you look at it it's a little silly i think i think that it is yeah well it has to be two it can't be the equivalent with other picks you know it's got to be it's got to be the, the first. actual first, and we're not making that trade. And otherwise, we're. I, I just and maybe they, they just want someone at twenty three. For... Maybe they don't want to trade up at all, and we're all over. That would be, the, that would be just, awesome. Like they, they do just trade, like, all the future first, and they stick at twenty three. <laughs> so the Eagles traded up from pick thirteen to pick eight with yep. the Dolphins, and then they traded up from pick eight to pick two with the. Browns. But did that happen so, on so, draft night? No, it happened before. No. I remember sitting in class when that move dropped. It was not a draft. I, and and the second trade move. was with Cleveland. So that trade being dumb by the receiving team, that checks out, Matt. Who did? This is the 2016 Cleveland Browns. That checks. Who did they take with the eighth overall <laughs> the pick? I, I was that Gilbert? That was Gilbert, right? It may have been Gilbert. Was that Gilbert? I feel like was Gilbert was a little bit earlier than that, Hold though. On. I think Gilbert was like a 2016 was long ago. 2016 was a long time ago. I, but I think that Gilbert was even. It doesn't uh, matter. Browns, right? it, it matters. Oh, it matters did, the, did the Browns trade out of that pick too? Yes. And then that was, was that? No, Mantel? that wasn't Coleman. There was Coleman. Uh, uh, it was if, Coleman. If, my Browns they took Coleman knowledge. at 15. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. Fair the enough. Browns traded back to 15 again after that. That was with, they traded back with the Titans. So Theo, you're right. The Titans were involved with that. The Titans took Jack Conklin and then the Browns took Corey Coleman. Right. Yeah. All that is <laughs> to say. Of, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All that is to say. Um, 
I, I, I mean, I guess like if, if the Vikings are trading up for Drake May, who cares? Oh, they that's lost my take, take. Like, who, who, Okay, who gives? I, I, I'm being annoying about it. Fair enough. Like, who cares at the end of the day? And if this is what they need to do, go for it. If they're trading up for anybody other than May. <laughs> <laughs> that's how I feel. I and, and, I, and I still feel like I'm a little dubious that May is going to be traded for a bowl. Like, I understand that Daniels is going to be the number two overall pick in all the betting markets. Like, the commanders love him or whatever. They're, he's going to be the pick. We, I'm just missing something. Um, sure, whatever. But, like, why would New England not take him at number three? I guess maybe, maybe it's not unfathomable that if Washington has a lower grade on May, the Patriots could too and would rather trade back or take Marvin. If, if, I think, like, I think that's what it is. On May. Yeah. That's the only way that I can think of this playing out is because Washington is certainly not just going to trade out of two and just go like no QB. But maybe yeah, maybe they'll, it's they'll like to a somebody. point where maybe it's to a point where the Patriots think the gap between Penix and May is not big enough or something like that. And then the 23rd mm. pick is for the Patriots. So they like have a pick they feel secure with getting Penix with. Whereas like at 34, maybe it's a little bit more up in the air. At 23, it feels like a little bit better of a lock. Plus you have the fifth year option, which you'd want if you're taking a quarterback that high. I don't know. I would, I personally, if May was there at three and I was a pay, I would feel like that was a bail and I would take that and then yeah. start looking for weapons on day two. That's what I would do pretty easily. Yeah, but, yeah. Or you could just pick Marv. Would you rather have Marv? Or picks 11 and 23. I'd rather have Marv than picks 11 and 23, certainly. But I'd rather have May than, than Marv. I'd take May number two overall. You got to take the QB shot. Yeah. I agree. So, but, you know, not everybody is as high on May as us. I know I'm calling the commanders idiots and say they should just... I, none of these rumors I, I should exist. It, and it should be a stone cold block it. that they take May. No, no, but maybe I, I just am missing something. I, man, I don't think... I, I, I don't, don't think so, it. though. I went back and watched May again, so and I was either. like, I, I was so like, he's, he's better than Daniels. He's he goaded. He's, he's goaded. Go- <laughs> he's goaded. He's goaded. No, my, my, my thing is, like, people that love Jaden Daniels, they're like, Daniels is QB1. I'm like, what does Jaden Daniels do that's better than Caleb Williams, first of all? Like, really, truly, other than, other than running. Yes. Yeah, like, he's that's fast. it. That's, but, like, that's it, right? He won the Heisman Williams. Hitler numbers. That's what. He, that's uh, okay. how he's better. But he doesn't. Right, I mean, he's not like, as good on as tape. Caleb. That's what I'm saying. Like he's people not are like, oh yeah, I watched the tape and Jaden Daniels is just. He's he's just. I'm like, what does he actually do better than Caleb Williams? Nothing. Nothing. He's he's nothing. just fast. He's faster, but he doesn't have better pocket presence. He doesn't have a stronger he arm. He doesn't. He's not more elastic. He doesn't break tackles. Like he's not as physical. Jaden Daniels is built like me. I cannot stress this enough. <laughs> There's Skinny a picture me, Fields, me <laughs> and me and Jaden have a picture next to each other. We have the same exact frame. We have the Can same we see exact this picture, frame. Theo? Can we sure, see this picture? Sure, it's. it's I'll, I've posted it before. I'm sure people have seen it. It's like Caleb is gonna be able to take on more contact. He's gonna be able to break tackles. He's He's more physical. He's more strong. Like he, I think, like he targets the middle of the field more than Daniels yeah. does. Like he's he's just better. I guess I guess Caleb fumbles a lot more, and he isn't as like electric as a runner. I guess in terms of speed, but like, but like I, with with Daniels, it's so interesting because. His superpower is his running, no doubt about it. But like, he absolutely cannot run how he did. There's like a monkey paw. There's There's like a monkey fist. Like, but he's a great (laughs) runner. This guy's an electric runner, but like, he's going to hurdle, you know, in the A gap or whatever the hell. And it's like, it just you that can't possibly fly. I don't think anybody thinks that that's going to fly. No, maybe like every quarterback who's mobile gets the whole well that are going to get hurt talk but it's really not true for all of them some guys are mobile and they avoid contact with it and some guys yeah, take yeah. more daniels and, is like and, a light frame guy who just takes unbelievable hits and it's like the light frame guys have a long history of getting hurt recently right zach wilson is banged up a lot like he's had his injuries yeah. he's got a light frame um 
Bryce Young, who dealt with some injuries last year, not anything too crazy, but you know, he was banged up. Even, even Justin Fields, who is like a thicker, is basically a thicker version of Jaden Daniels. (laughs) Has yeah, not he gets been banged immune up. to injuries before either. Tyler is <laughs> like, small and he's banged up every single year. Like a lot of the smallest quarterbacks are the guys who are hurt. <laughs> I don't know. I just, I just, yeah. I don't understand it. And and I think if the Vikings I, the are the only thing, up the only thing Jayden, I could I'd... see, yeah, the only thing I could see with May would be his release is slow. That could be. <laughs> that would be the only thing where I'm like. Maybe you think that's going to be a huge issue, but his pocket presence. I think is so I think good. he has some accuracy issues as well. Like I, I think sure there's there's a couple of things, but I, honestly, with the slow release, I think that his unreal arm talent like just makes up for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think the ball still gets there more than quick enough. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I think that the, the accuracy to throw the time it gets there. The accuracy stuff too is I think a bit overrated in or. Yeah, it's overrated in terms of how much it's a negative because he has hit some of the craziest throws I've seen in this whole class with like pinpoint accuracy. It's just he's constantly yes. trying this shit, I think, and like <laughs> making things hard so he'll miss some. He I don't just, know. I, I feel like Herbert had limits. accuracy issues and Lamar had accuracy issues. Yes. And like Allen was like deemed like super inaccurate. And I just think he's in the mold of those guys. And it's like... Yeah, and sometimes maybe he'll miss an easy one. And maybe Josh Allen will miss an easy one sometimes too because he's like putting so much on it or, you know, he's just broken a tackle and now he's throwing and he's just like... Even Mahomes at some points in his career, I mean... Yeah, yeah. I remember there was a stretch where Mahomes couldn't hit the easy ones. And this wasn't, mm-hmm. you know, year one. This is like year four. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. And But you wouldn't call them inaccurate because they'll also hit the the high degree of difficulty they'll also do really accuracy. accurate things yeah, yeah they'll do really <laughs> yeah. accurate things that other guys couldn't do and it makes up for like maybe some of the layups that they hit and i i really think with all of may's flaws it's a it's a play style it's like a byproduct of his of his crazy play style um more than like actual negatives like no one's perfect all the time you're doing a bunch of crazy stuff constantly there's going to yeah. be some moments that look bad it's true for Mahomes. It's true for Lamar. It's true for everybody. So, I I would if this is a trade up for May, I would be very scared of the Vikings. But if it's a trade up for anybody else, I oh, think yeah, they'd, they'd get. It'd be such a good landing spot. Up. If I was May, I'd be oh. I'd be putting like the Vikings lining inside my suit. I'd be <laughs> being like, oh, you know, I I'd, I'd start making some cryptic tweets to fall. Certainly, um, <laughs> yeah, I, I think. But I, it, it's, it's just hard for me to believe that like he's actually going to fall to the point where like the Vikings really need three teams that desperately need a quarterback to pass on him. And that is just right. crazy to me that, that that could actually happen. So I still think that this might all be to trade up for like Jaden or McCarthy, which I would not like. But who knows? This episode of Stay Hot is brought to you by the spring cleaning champions over at Manscaped. This season, make sure to groom your carpets and the drapes with the leaders in below the waist grooming. Clear out that winter bush with Manscaped's new lawnmower 5.0 and watch your confidence bloom like the springtime flowers. Embrace the season and join the 10 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with our official offer. Go over to manscaped.com and use the code Stay Hot, all caps, all one word, for 20 20% off plus free shipping because after I've started using Manscaped, I can say I have finally caught the spring fever. And of course, you know, you hate making a mess. That's why they made this boy waterproof, shave in the shower, in the bath, or even if you really want to in the ocean. So once again, go and get 20% off plus free shipping with the code stay hot. Again, that's all caps, all one word at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping for the best below the waist grooming in the world. With the code stay hot at manscaped.com. Nothing like a little spring cleaning in your pants. Steph Curry makes you believe that you can do anything. I mean, look at me. He has me believing that I can shoot threes when I play pickup basketball. And the Curry 11s are specifically designed with ultimate bounce, grip, and stability to allow everyone to do their thing. New generations of ball players are coming up and showing the basketball world that the old rules do not apply. The future is exciting, fast, positive, and hungry. 
this NBA season, rock your favorite player and rep his shoes on and off the court. The Curry 11s are perfect for both the committed and casual ballers. The UA Warp Tech makes the shoe feel like it was designed for your feet, locked in no matter what you do on the court. Stop in your tracks with dual density UA flow cushioning and traction, an emergency brake that you don't even notice. Steph's 11th signature shoe steps into the second decade of his sneaker career, pulling colorway inspiration from the wonders of a positive and modernized future on and off the court. Take these kicks with you when you leave the scrimmage and rep UA wherever you go. Do your thing. Change the game. The Curry 11 Future Curry is available now at currybrand.com. We probably have to give a shout out to one of the all-time greats retiring. Aaron Donald. Aaron Donald. Done. Mm. Little bit of a, I'd say a lot of bit of a surprise. I don't think we really heard anything oh, sh- going sh- into this whole season. Yeah. But I, I will well, it's say it's been boiling it's for not, a while. But it's been, yeah. and that's exactly what I was going to say. It's been boiling for a minute. Like, was it two years ago that he was talking about? Oh, he I filed the paperwork. Another... He filed he the paperwork really to retire, and then it. got like a like an outlier contract that was just like absolutely crazy after he submitted that... the retirement papers. So it was like kind of a leverage play because like he just got a huge contract, and then they won the Super Bowl. <laughs> I, I think but that I, was I don't think it was really level. leverage. I think like he was really down to retire. Yeah, like he clearly, wasn't, clearly. <laughs> considering Which I, that I he wouldn't is have, now retired. I wouldn't have. I, I wouldn't have blamed him for retiring then. But it, it's just crazy when you see a guy who is a first team All Pro player retiring. And right? he was great yeah, last year. He was great. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, he was first team All Pro last year. Oh, and, he made you know, it. Yeah, in, yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He was first team All Pro last year. That's his eighth been. first team All Pro. You know, that's tied for fifth ever. He's one of three players to have three uh, Defensive Player of the Years. Like, he he is up there for like one of the greatest defensive players ever. It's just weird to see those guys retire like a little bit earlier than you think they should. But at this point, it's like, what else does he have to prove? Like, what what is what else could he possibly accomplish nothing, outside nothing. of like being an MVP or like maybe getting a Super Bowl MVP? Like but, I like, said, are you willing? Are you willing to a, play that much longer to get that? Probably not. Getting an MVP is not happening. Like yeah, I said, that's on what Twitter, I'm saying. Like he, he had a perfect career. He had a, literally a perfect mm-hmm. career. He, first year. He was Defensive Rookie of the Year and made a Pro Bowl. Then he made First Team All-Pro each of the next one, two, three, six. Six. Six years in a row. Yeah. Seven seasons. (laughs) And then he got hurt. It's seven seasons in a row. Was it seven? It was seven in a row the next several years. You're right. Getting Defensive Player of the Year votes. Um, He was second his second year in the league in Defensive Player of the Year. Then he was fourth. (laughs) Then he was first. Then he was first. Then he was fifth. Then he was first, and then he was third. So he was top five in defensive player of the year voting every year in those seasons, winning three. And then he oh won a Super Bowl for his team, like single-handed. Aaron Donald is going to make a play. Like he made like the big time. Play. And then he, ring, yeah. he, he hit the yeah, ring he made, me. He made the- he Which did, is, yeah, he got the winning play in both the NFC Championship and in the Super Bowl. Yeah, That's like crazy. so he has a signature playoff moment where like that resulted in a ring like it's perfect like there's no <laughs> career that is better than this like i'm sorry jj watt heads like he was he was just as dominant but he was injured and he did not have the career that aaron donald did right like it, it maybe it, i think lawrence taylor you know he was the number one guy on some crazy defenses that won several rings maybe he you know i think it's him and Darn- D- donald as like i don't know if anybody beats beats what they put forward i saw a lot so. of people saying reggie oh yeah reggie reggie the packers it's a, legend it, it's, um, it's tough um and, and the other thing he did it all for the same team mm-hmm. and yeah. he was the highest paid ever at his position yeah dude tough to beat that and he was like <laughs> it's, it's spotless <laughs> you could you could keep going but honestly even if you stop now the question will always be like you know could he have kept going and going and going and there's no reason to push yourself yeah. into your You're late thirties or whatever and it's like you've already got it so i i shout out to him unbelievable yeah, yeah. no yeah and very secretive like 
guy, like no press conference, just kind of disappears. And I don't know if we'll ever hear from him again. Like he's not going to be in media. I think he's like, seriously, I, I don't know how much we're going to hear about Aaron Donald anymore. Like you never hear about him. My girlfriend just learned calls. who he was. Let me make some calls. We'll like, get him on Stay Hot. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, he's probably the greatest football player of like the century, like outside of Brady. And she's like, who? <laughs> and I and yeah, yeah no one's, I, mean, I don't think we're going to really see him. That's probably correct. Like greatest football player of the century outside of Brady. Yeah, I think so. I'm trying to think about who else would be in that mix, but I think you're probably right. Larry Fitzgerald, maybe. Like yeah. in terms of great, like he's ranked so highly and everything, but I think Donald is better than Larry. Better like, his position, yeah. So it's crazy. It, it it heavily impacts the Rams status as dark horse Super Bowl contenders, like I said last episode. <laughs> I'm not quite sure if their defensive line uh, or their defense I, is I think I think Super it, Bowl it, level now that Donald is gone. I think it really might might cook them, man. I mean, they've lost a lot of the stars from their stars and scrubs defense. And it was a float last year, which was nice. I think without Aaron Donald. No, nah, man, I don't know. It's going to be tough. I, I, I think the defense could take a massive step back. And I don't know if the offense makes and up Raheem, for it. And Raheem However, Morris left. Yeah, it's like you lose your defensive coordinator and your number one defensive player and, like, your number one defensive mm. player was everything. And all of a sudden, having, like, the 300-pound, you know, Michael Hoyt in coverage isn't so cute anymore, man. <laughs> <laughs> I just yeah, stopped I, being funny real, real quick. <laughs> However, they do play in the NFC. So, playoffs – Still very much alive. Sure, but yeah, they play in yeah. the NFC West, and like Seattle yeah, but the Seahawks be sabotage them. themselves this offseason. Seahawks I guess that's players. true. <laughs> 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 yeah, the Seahawks. Really. The Seahawks. <laughs> no, I mean they they killed their own they defense. They took out a lot of their defense, though. There's no. Yeah, they, they, yeah, they, 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 they I don't did. think Seattle has not made me like feel good about their chances. So, and the Cardinals aren't exactly ready the no. best team either yeah they i mean who's their receiver one right now i don't know i'm a little but bit disappointed in who's like, their... the fact that the cardinals did like nothing in free agency outside of overpaid justin jones like you have kyler like you're kind of like you're not ready to contend but they did like they signed not they cut dj humphreys they need to tackle really badly they need a receiver really i wouldn't badly. say they did nothing <laughs> i think some of their moves are <laughs> Some of their moves have been really good, honestly. <laughs> you know what pissed me off about the Ritter trade, bro? All of a sudden, everybody's hyping up Rondell Moore. Come on, man. That's, they said that was Ritter a fleece. Clears a fleece. Him. It's like, what are you talking about, bro? Hey, Ritter did go for more than any other quarterback this offseason, though. You should be hyping up Rondell Moore yourself, being I like started, I started Ritter was traded up. for an all-pro. You should be you should be pushing the Rondale agendas more than anybody and say like field sixth round pick picket pick swap. I literally have Powell, that tweet pick in swap. my drafts. I just didn't and, it. <laughs> and Ritter right was now, traded. Man. Send it right now for a wide we'll receiver one. <laughs> and the Cardinals gave up their wide receiver one for Ritter. No, there this is a, this is a legit bro. Who is the Cardinals wide receivers right now? Greg it's gonna be they have? They Michael afford, Wilson. Though. I guess, but like we're saying the guessed? same thing about you can't just have like one guy out yes, there. Yes, you can. Well, 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 Michael Wilson my, and Trey McBride are, I guess, good. Um, but yeah, getting, getting it, good. you yeah, added like one A, which Marv or Adunze or neighbors probably like will be, especially Marv if that's who they end up getting. Like that does change the outlook of like, okay, well now this group of like all right dudes plus Marv is pretty good. When you're not asking any yeah. of those all right dudes to be like the dude who's winning. Plus, McBride is is a very good player. So I I think maybe it's McBride a little yeah. below average. Maybe it's a maybe little shallow. Yeah, they just I, don't the have one thing idea. that really killed me is like I don't think Atlanta's receiver room is that great. People were no, you know, we, we were getting we were getting some of the, you know, look at their they replaced Van Jefferson, first of all. <laughs> so they got worse. For no reason. <laughs> <laughs> Got no, I, I mean, it's like, it's I like, like Drake London and dude, Darnell Kyle Mooney and Darnell Mooney yeah. and Rondell Moore combined for 120 targets and 700 yards last year. 
like I, I I'm, yeah. I'm not saying that they're necessarily like awful players or anything or you know the quarterback situation didn't play into that some but like these outside of a darnell mooney one year like 150 target season <laughs> like these guys aren't like big time producers they're not like proven no, commodities they're both kind of wide receiver threes to me and one of them has to be wide yeah. receiver two i guess maybe if they can run the whole offense through and Pitts where does drake and london rank london among and... all wide receivers Oh yeah, I, mm, I still. It's mm. like this is not. It's a below average receiver room. Now you add in Pitts, which you should, and you there add in Bijan, which you should. I think the weapons are overall a positive still, but I'm not like super moved by their receivers. This in is what particular. I was thinking. I mean, London's a good player, but he's not one of like the top tier wide receiver ones. No. Their this whole is team is not this like morning. moving to me, especially like I was I was thinking about this bottom. this morning. Would you rather have the Vikings weapons last year or the Falcons weapons this oh, year? That's not even a question. That's not even a remotely a question. Not even like close to a question. Mo- le- next no. question. Justin Jefferson is would be the greatest wide receiver of all time. I would, we're talking like we're talking the equivalent of that in the '90s would be like or '80s or whatever Jerry Rice played. I'm I'm not a hundred years old, so I don't even remember. Uh, probably both years because he played till he was forty. But uh, decades, decades. It's like, would you rather have the 49ers weapons or like? I don't, I don't know any. I don't other. even know. Mid ass, <laughs> some mid ass. It'd, <laughs> It'd be stupid. It'd be stupid. So I'm just, I'm just, I'm just thinking like the Falcons are like the Falcons' weapons aren't necessarily better than the Vikings, and Kirk Cousins might be worse than he was last year coming off an Achilles injury. Like I don't know if I really there's love a this lot Falcons. on him coming back from that Achilles. That's what I'm bro. saying. That's all I'm he saying. has to be. He has to be. be nice. Really good. And he's really, and it's been done recently, and he's a quarterback, so it's like I don't want to, I, I can't predict. Maybe. Like it's impossible to predict how that stuff is, but I don't know. There's just fe- it feels like there's a lot that could go wrong for this Falcons offense. Oh yeah, definitely. So I don't know. I'm the Falcons built something this year. I don't know if it. <laughs> I don't know. I I think that if you slot <laughs> they built in, something. they built something. Denied. So we'll 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 see. Uh, if trading Ritter away ends up being the greatest mistake that franchise ever made. But anyway. Yeah, man. So Absolutely. true. Is there um, anything else that we wanted to hit? Theo, maybe I thought Ty- you wanted to hit on the Titans, maybe? Or Tyron Smith might be, too. Yeah, the Titans are also building something, I guess, with the Calvin Ridley deal. I mean, they got loads of money, so I think it's okay to throw a bag at Calvin mm-hmm. Ridley, like... We'll see what, like, give Levis a shot, I guess, get some receivers, draft the tackle probably at seven and see what you got with him. Um, I, I kind of think Levis might could be a pleasant surprise, but I'm very cautiously optimistic. I don't really want to say too too much. Um, we'll see. We'll see. I, I don't have too much to say about One of the better let's see what he's got QBs mm-hmm. that is not like a first round pick for sure. Mm-hmm. like i think th- I th- there's genuine yeah. like some of these guys where it's like i don't want to bring them but like justin fields where it's like you might as well give him a shot it, levis feels like you haven't seen a ton of them and it's been pretty good when you have and there's some problems yeah. there and i've got some questions but he's young enough and fresh enough like all right I, i'm it feels I think like it's a totally reasonable thing to, to roll they're with ca- they're kind of trying to money ball it it feels like because it's like called what or not uh uh, Callahan is their coach and like Levis is their quarterback and like Ridley is their wide receiver one. I just don't know where that like ranks amongst offensive, you know, trios at those big three spots. But hey, yeah. you know, what else are they going to do? You know, like what else are they going to do? I, I, I think at seven, they're not aggressively trying to replace Levis. And we've talked about quarterbacks a lot, unless you want to trade up for May. I think that's fine. And I think it's fine to throw a bag when you've got this much money at the best wide receiver that hit the open market. So like they're probably not building a super team or anything like that, but we'll see if these, if what they're doing is underrated. I think it could be, I think it could be Mm -hmm. nothing's too splashy, no huge names, but I think they could be doing something underrated, but we'll see. They did, they did bring in a woozy corner. They needed a corner and that could be, 
Yeah, and he's underrated too when he's healthy. When he's healthy, he's just never healthy, right. um, unfortunately. But, but it's, I think it's, I think that's a shot worth taking. Yeah, you know, for a team that's desperate for good corner play. All right. Yeah, I don't hate what they've done, but it's going to be tough in a division with all those franchise quarterbacks yeah. to 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 make it out of the basement. We'll we'll see. I, they're making an effort. You know, they're spending money. They're they're trying. Yeah. So we'll see. I, and then Tyron Smith signed with the Jets. And really, the funny thing about that was, I saw a headline. I think it was from Pro Football Talk. So it could be wrong if it's Florio, but like. He said that the Jets were surprised that Tyron Smith actually signed with them <laughs> instead of it being just like a leverage play to drive the price up with somebody else. But I think that's a great, <laughs> great signing. Like, I actually have to shout out the Jets for getting a move done while Aaron Rodgers is distracted. Um, signing <laughs> Tyron Smith instead of Bakhtiari. That's so, that's so funny, man. You're just like... I tweet, saw you tweet, tweet. that, and I, I <laughs> it's like, yeah. Now that now that Rogers is like running for vice president, they can actually mm-hmm. get shit done. <laughs> yeah, and, then, and uh, think- they picked up uh, Morgan Moses as well. They've been building out that offensive line a little bit, and they built um, out, and they j- drafted John, or they signed John Simpson from Baltimore, who I think is a good guard. So actually, they kind of did rebuild their offensive line like very quietly in free agency. And what if they? decided like again you kind of have to put all your eggs in the Aaron Rodgers will be good basket right mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so what if what if you stay aggressive what if they're the T Higgins team because mm, their other big be- need is like they Ooh. gotta get another weapon in there and it's like all of a sudden it's like you rebuilt that offensive line and I kind of think you did a good job and we end up being the T team and it's him and Wilson out there. That's pretty I can see good. that. That's a good thought. And they wouldn't have to give up the 10th overall pick for T. So they, they wouldn't have to give add... up the 10th overall pick. And then you got another, and you could add another guy in there. You know, the defense, the defense is, is good. I think it could yeah. be pretty, I think that could be pretty darn good. Oh, it would come down to 40 year old Aaron Rodgers off an Achilles tear. And but Nathaniel like... Hackett still as their offensive coordinator. <laughs> Yeah, we got yeah, two. I teams, see what you're we saying. Two teams banking on an old quarterback coming back from an Achilles injury. Don't this. place that futures <laughs> Super Bowl bet just yet. Uh, but yeah, I, 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 I mean, they could. I, I do like the offseason that they've had so far. Outside of Rogers saying that you know Sandy Hook wasn't real. <laughs> outside outside of <laughs> and then he said in his oh, tweet God. he said on uh, this is just disgusting stuff but he said in his tweet like i never said that something didn't happen or something like that he's yeah. like i never, yes, and he I was never very, very, very vague I, i've been immunized he's like i never denied that the events didn't take place it's like yeah but you think the events were staged <laughs> <laughs> you thought that you you know that there, you think that it, something happened there but you like you thought that people got shot and stuff but that they were staged right i don't know i he's a he's a weasel so, that guy is he's, he's a weirdo man he is a, a great a weirdo but and he didn't even get to be <laughs> vice president unfortunately for for rfk he was snubbed by someone named shanahan <laughs> <laughs> i've noticed Rogers I'm loses to the shanahan, sna- the shanahan crime family <laughs> Rodgers once again Aaron loses Rogers. to Shanahan. This is crazy. <laughs> no, um, honestly, like they're right. Like if if you believe the offensive line is getting there and Hall's back, and you could go get T. Higgins, and the defense is what it was last year. Like that roster is starting to become so good, where I think you could like be a real threat, even with like one of the good backups in the NFL. It would mm-hmm. start to become yeah. so stacked. Where it's like, I wonder, like, what would an Andy Dalton do in there? Something, something like that. Uh, so it's, I, I think the pressure is really on Rodgers because I, I think if if their off season keeps going this way, it could be one I mean, of the better rosters out there. We'll they, see. If they got T Higgins, they would be, they would have a better roster than the they, Browns did last year, and the Browns made the playoffs with some pretty horrific quarterback play. And they have Tyrod. Play. They so. signed Tyrod. But the T. Special. Higgins move has not <laughs> happened yet, and their yeah, current I, wide receiver too is Jason Brownlee. Is, <laughs> all right, man. <laughs> so they do, you know. All right. You talk, Alan but Lazard is their fifth highest paid player. He's their wide receiver too. No, it was, it was so funny that the news dropped. They're like, "We will be shopping Alan Lazard." Oh, 
<laughs> a healthy scratch on a huge contract. Certainly, the market is the phone is ringing off the hook. Nineteen sure. million guaranteed on that sucker, mind you. I'm sure I could cut him and save negative seven million dollars. <laughs> Might be worth this it. Moves the needle. <laughs> yeah, I I don't know why that was. They 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 threw that out there. I I can't imagine that's super popular. But yeah, I like what they've done on the line. They have several other holes still, and Rodgers is a huge mm-hmm. question mark. But Tyrod was a good backup move, and I like their offensive line now to some extent. I do like their offense. I can just straight up say it. I like their offensive line, except for the fact that Tyron Smith will maybe get injured. Got to be worried yeah. about the Cowboys, though. Yeah, definitely. All in my <laughs> All ass. All in my ass. <laughs> <laughs> it's a crazy Theo tweet notification. I won't lie to you. <laughs> I didn't make that one up. I, I knew that was a free banger uh, from other yeah, accounts tweeting that. So just couldn't couldn't resist the urge to to get the it's free the free engagement. Even tweet. though I don't I don't have Twitter blue, so that I mean, yeah. it doesn't get me anything. But yeah, for the, yeah, all that for it gets me what, the dopamine probably, of quote tweets. Thirty cents of Twitter blue revenue, oh. probably. Oh, speaking speaking of kind of related. Uh, so the Antonio Brown account, which has obviously been sold to someone else, I saw a tweet from them complaining about like the Twitter blue revenue. He's like half a <laughs> half a billion views and only thirteen hundred bucks, and I'm dying to know how much. Antonio Debased Brown got for his account. Yeah, how much did I mean? It, it's like every day, every tweet now is like, "Here's a new shirt. Mm-hmm. Here's a new. Please go buy this yeah, shirt." I, I think whoever's <laughs> blocked, doing that. I blocked that account when I when I noticed um, when I noticed its fraudulence. Uh, hopefully, this guy didn't drop too much of a bag on CTESPN and then hoped that Antonio Brown Twitter Blue revenue would uh would oh roll in forever and ever because yeah well now now it's now the account has started to tweet like every hour you know like everything they can possibly yeah. think of for volume but i did the math half a billion views um and and 1300 bucks comes out to a quarter of a penny per thousand Ooh, it's yeah. looking <laughs> It's, it's looking <laughs> over for CTESPN uh, <laughs> Instagram influencer. He will pivot Bro, to is, a right wing. This is why. This is why we, need, we cannot. We cannot get TikTok banned, bro. It is the only platform where you get like real money for views. YouTube, right? Yeah, but right. I'm saying like the only. It's the only like non. Like you don't have to make like a 15 minute video essay. Yeah, yeah. We did, <laughs> it's the only one where you can get cheap bangers off and make a bag. Joe Biden, have you considered? <laughs> please, please. Please. Yeah, seriously. I I saw I read the paper um here in Foxborough, and just as I feared, all the calls to represent representatives only strengthened their resolve to vote against TikTok <laughs> because I'm, I, I saw all that stuff out there like, call your representative. And I'm like, don't ask TikTokers to call their representative, dude. They're too annoying. And they're going to get TikTok banned. Like if you were- I was flat, workshopping. A 50-year-old senator and like a bunch of Gen Z like Zoomers call you like, please don't ban my TikTok, please. I'd be like, call you and vote like was- even more to ban it i was so worried and then literally i opened the paper because i saw a headline on it and it was like some some senator was like i had a call and someone threatened to commit suicide if we ban tiktok <laughs> yes and then someone called me hysterically st- sobbing and i'm like i knew that <laughs> you guys would mess this up for us don't call your senator don't call your senator <laughs> You're just making Dude, I, I was I was workshopping a Gen Z rise up TikTokers rise up video, but I couldn't. You should. You should. You should. Guys, come on! Spawn no, Little we can do it. <laughs> it would be so funny to get a compilation of like fantasy football AZ and like the baby Bronk Riz guy, like, <laughs> like, like, like singing like Twitter to stay. Singing Imagine. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh my god, I'm I might have to put that together. Can we get <laughs> <laughs> all right bro imagine gotta... a black screen it fades fantasy football az is in front of his microphone <laughs> with his filters on he breaks <laughs> he breaks into john lennon's imagine <laughs> what senator i <they> know <laughs> I'll, I'll get started on the ai voiceover i honestly i honestly think yeah, there's a decent number AI. of people who would be down to do this i really do i think you could get a few <laughs> <laughs> we shouldn't we should sing a tiktok like trending song. can we get can we get an ai voiceover for like rico knows and <laughs> yeah rico, <laughs> rico. <laughs> this would move the needle this would, would, this would save tiktok this would, it would save move TikTok. the needle <laughs> okay but <laughs> well we'll see what we can don't worry listeners we will save tiktok how did uh, uh, this all started because i was like you got to feel bad about the cowboys and then theo just uh, all, you know. all in my head yeah but i you really do have to be concerned about dallas i i, I think oh yeah no doubt i mean i don't know how like, they're better than they are last ne next year no I don't know how they're better they're one of, you know how we talk about them. they could have 10 pick sixes maybe like Per game <laughs> Trayvon Diggs and Bland yeah, are out there. hold on this is their offensive Same players time. their offense will be defense and that will change the league i guess what uh, would it take for you know how we talk about like almost every single team thinks that they're better after the off season like very few teams are like yeah we're we're just worse yeah. even on paper or like mm -hmm. The Cowboys are probably going to end up being the like one of the two or three teams where it's like we're just worse on paper. We definitely mm -hmm. got worse, mm -hmm, or is yeah. that it's like just if you're not getting better, you're getting worse. And it's like they kind of just lost and they weren't there last year, and you're kind of just rolling the dice with worse odds again. And I can't remember a time where that's ever really worked out. No, no, and it, it's not going to be their year next year. No one like I saw them announce no. they like resigned their special teams ace, and the quote tweets and replies were not not happy so i i don't think dallas fans will be under any kind of uh, illusion that it's um their year although i do think that dallas fans get a bit of a bad reputation because like if my team was as good as dallas i'd probably think that i'd have a chance too so but this is like and now that they don't have a chance probably like the fans won't probably be so happy <laughs> like kind of like yeah, any other they went they went, they went they went basically a decade where like every year they it felt they've like they had, had the a quarterback good like they've had good defenses yeah. it's recently. unbelievable how many times it's been their year it really is <laughs> <laughs> but it hasn't been like unreasonable for most of that time no no it's you should have just, they should some have reason. gotten more playoff success than uh, they've had oh this yeah year it's a little different because they ran into a juggernaut but like in previous years um they definitely I mean, they've had they've had they've had two franchise quarterbacks they've had Des Bryant, C.D. Lamb, I Jason know. Witten. I know. I mean, the number of superstar players they've had in my lifetime is is ridiculous. I, I, I can't stress that enough. But instead of making the Cowboys fans cry for another, like, 10 minutes, I think we should probably wrap it up here don't have a whole lot more to talk about we were supposed to give our top five edge defenders in, in this year's class maybe there'll like, be a tick tock there's too much news <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> too much maybe news. too much news we'll, we'll we'll do some more draft prospect stuff i'm sure at some point but you know free oh. agency's been going on so we can't not talk about that but we will be back with a, a live stream here pretty shortly and whether or not that's more news or another draft prospect review uh is to yet to be seen but we will have a live stream but until then thank you all so much for tuning in and as always from your favorite three folks ever on the stay hot podcast we will catch you on <laughs> we will catch you on the flippity flip <laughs>